American Death Camp, hosted by Stone Fox Detroit, is made possible by the Kill Podcasters Network, this station and other public television stations, and Sam Bateman Free. Funding for this special presentation and the humanities was provided by Nexia and the Ted Kaczynski Memorial Trust. There we fucking go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to American Death Camp. We are about to dive headfirst into a whirlwind of digital culture, human behavior, and the ongoing battle for hearts and minds. I'm Stone Fox Detroit, and as always, I'm with my producer, the King of Piss Magazine, the Frazzle Drip Matador Mafioso Tanner. Everybody, hey, what's going on, guys? Happy yes. to be here. I, I'm, I'm, dude. I'm ecstatic to be here, dude. I, I am like. <sighs> I'm vibrating, dude. I know. We, we've uh, <laughs> been working on this for a couple of months, and it's nice to finally, I don't know. As much as we didn't want to say out. that it'd be a couple of months, but I mean, I, I mean, think that's a good thing. Yeah, we're working on four other shows. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> we've, we've got, we've got <laughs> nine things, nine projects in the run, so I mean. All right. Um, we're strapping ourselves in to dissect the wild ride of social media videos, YouTube shorts, Facebook reels, and the ever-expanding universe of online cultures and harsh realities all right from from the limits of human potential to heartwarming stories that reaffirm our faith in humanity the internet's treasure trove of content is a mirror reflecting our collective soul but let's not kid ourselves it's also a battle where culture wars rage on with viral debates sparking fiery discussions faster than you can hit the like button we're going to traverse the digital landscape hand in hand <laughs> with the world through the internet's rose-colored sunglasses, analyze its, analyzing its impact on our thoughts, behaviors, and even our fashion choices. Who's shaping the minds of the masses, and how are they wielding their power in the vast online arena? With a discerning eye... Oh, oh, I oh, almost went off script. <laughs> we'll separate the authentic voices from the manufactured personas, unraveling the threads of influence that weave through every frame. So buckle up, babes and brutes, as we plunge into the vortex of American death camp. We will lie, we will laugh, we will cry, we'll cringe, debate, and above all, seek to understand the intricate tapestry of our digital existence. It's a brave new world out there, and we're here to break it down one video at a time. All right, well, first, as we get into it, sorry about that. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, hit a drop, you know, break I attention. Need, I know. Jesus Christ, there we go. Kill, we'll kill a few Saudis there. <laughs> kill a couple more, hold on. There's a fart in there somewhere. There we go. Bring on the storm, okay? Oof. Break up the monotony here a little bit. Um, I need a little mu mood music, please, and it gets to our first video. I'm going to crack a beer here. There we go. We're jamming. We're standing at the bus stop. Please enjoy a beer at home. Crack a drink. Turn down the lights. Let's get ready to do this thing, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. That was, uh, that was wonderful. Tanner, I've seen you dance like that. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, seen no, you I'm many, a, many parties. Big math rock guy. <laughs> we smoke in symbiote. All right. Um, I kind of want to move into celebrities. I've been watching a lot of celebrity videos. I've got some grievances. Um, first up on the list, I've been waiting a long time to talk about this dude, okay? Machine Gun Kelly. Um, he's got a lot to say. He seems to be really uh, pissy. He's a pissy boy. Uh, he gets mad at people at his shows, okay? And I found this video, and it just, like, enraged me because he thinks he's so fucking enlightened. And, like, you can hear it in my voice, dude. It's like <laughs> my, my, my throat is, like, trembling with fucking anger and uh, resentment here. He's sort of a, he's a big old man child, man. More than a man child. I mean... I tried to have some respect for him with his downfall album and everything as he trying to court, you know, nope. uh, <laughs> as he tries to do his uh, career course uh, correction. But um, I saw an interview with him. OK, he was, uh, you know, you know, we'll get to the video first and then I'll show you what he did to this guy in the crowd who obviously got dragged there. Aww. Yeah. Expand your mind, okay? All right, pause this, pause this. I've already had it work half a second into like our real first video, and I'm already fucking stopping all the footage. Okay, 
He's on Howard Stern a year ago, okay? And he's telling this grandiose story about how I did ayahuasca in South America with Megan Fox. And he's talking about his trip and he's saying, oh, in my trip, I, I, I imagine that I, I was a beggar on the street and I had diamonds in my hands and all the passersby and the citizens, they, they, they looked on upon me and they, they kept walking and they looked down on me in shame and disgrace. They didn't notice that I had diamonds and jewels and emeralds in my hand, which means that I, I've got so much talent nobody recognizes. No, dude, you missed the whole fucking point of your trip. You are a beggar on the fucking street, okay? And you think that you have diamonds and guess what? Nobody gives a shit. Don't go to, if, if people are going to be at your live show, they, they might not have a lot of fun, okay? Uh, leave people alone. Calm the fuck down. Maybe maybe you should start hitting the DMT vape, okay? You're getting mad at Sam Tripoli, you're get, and he's not even talking about you. So just like relax, calm down, dr drink a fucking beer, okay? You know what? Continue the video. Let's just watch the rest of this. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it, maybe it gets enlightened a little bit. Yeah, I'd be having a tough night too. You're not playing an instrument. Singing my instrument. <laughs> yeah, I'm singing my instrument. Hey, dude, you know what? He stole. He let this guy steal the fucking show from him. Oh. What's up? All right, we're, we're, just play the rest of the video, please. Why are you apologizing? Stop apologizing. You stopped the show. You, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Well, now that I've aired my grievances out with Machine Gun Kelly, he's not woke. He's not enlightened. Uh, he still has a lot more learning to do. I think we're about the same age. So listen to me. Listen to your peers once in a fucking while. Um, okay. We're going to move on to our next celebrity here. Uh, Sean Penn. <laughs> this is good. This is really good. Sean, this guy's talking about Sean Penn um, coming in to do his... Uh, his philanthropy and um, being an activist, coming in to save people in a hurricane. This is uh, this is a good one. Here we go. We got Instagram here. Instagram checking Never in. Never even. I remember when that New Orleans thing was happening. Me too. And he went on Larry King and he was like, I had to go down there and save people. And he brought his own <laughs> photographer, like admitted to it, and then and then showed pictures of him like helping people into a boat. <laughs> Uh, right. like that's something I do. Orleans, and I was like, <laughs> this is the biggest douchebag. He's on par. Yeah. I don't know. It's for me. It's a it's a contest between Jared Leto and uh, and Sean Penn. MGK's up there. I MGK's up there. Like Sean Penn so much. I've yeah. never even. <laughs> I don't blame you. I remember when that New like, Orleans thing was happening. It's, and he went. On um, Sean Sean Penn's weird because he yeah. he's. Uh, he's a great being, actor. Don't get me wrong, dude. Yeah, but he's known for being a huge asshole and then overcompensating with the weirdest shit. Oh yeah, like, yeah. He was just kind. You know, he was a huge knob in the fucking '90s, right? Of course. And so then he's like, "Fuck, people don't like me very much. I should go catch El Chapo." <laughs> oh yeah, he lured him. Didn't he trick El Chapo? Like yes. they found out where he was and he gave him up. What an asshole. Yeah, man. he went to go interview El Chapo because um, he is a Pul Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist. Yeah. And so he went off. Oh, he was trying to be hero. He was trying to get the credit for, I set up El Chapo and I captured the head And he of the totally cartel. did. And we never talk about it. Yeah. Well, at least he didn't get the accolades for that. And also, the one thing I got to say to this guy is, didn't you see Carlito's way? What do you <laughs> mean you can't trust Sean Penn? And he's a douchebag. Are you kidding me? He gave up fucking Al Pacino. Come on, dude. That wasn't just a movie. That dude fucking method acts. Okay. That's really him. All right. The last good thing he was in was Colors. Method cast. Colors. Colors. Yeah, method. Is a great method. Movie. Dude, Robert Duvall. God, don't get me started on this. Isn't a movie podcast. That's that's the other one. On the Kill Podcasters Network. I believe we got something else to to move on to here. We got. Oh my God, we have we have so much fucking shit here. Oh, Billie Eilish. This is this is your favorite video. Here we go. Is it? I, I'm a I'm a huge I'm a huge Billy head. I've uh, you're heard, a Billy head. No, I've literally <laughs> never heard one song by her. It's a fact. Where do we go when we sleep? Well, it should be the doctor. The way that people react is they laugh because they think I'm like trying to be funny, right? They you think are. I'm going like as like a funny move. You are. <laughs> and so they go like, <laughs> <laughs> and I am always yeah. left incredibly man. That's that's heartbreaking. I would, I would never accuse Billie Eilish of making a calculated move for people to like her. 
very yeah. How, how dare we? How, how dare I even oh, step into that territory? So do you think she's uh, faking it? Yeah, this is my my statement, and you know you got to take one side of the fence or the other, and you either got to go all the way or you don't say anything at all. And I, Billy, you're lying. You're full of it. You told the you're making all those home movies with your brother when you were eleven, trying to be goofy and shit, and you just started doing one of these things. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, people who do this kind of thing, and I don't know if it's an attention thing or you got. I mean, honestly, it, it probably is an attention thing. You got to be center center of the room, all, all eyes on you, and it's like, what is the weirdest thing I can do? Yeah, the millions of dollars you make. Uh, isn't enough to sustain all of that. That's fucking ridiculous to me, honestly. I know, I know that comes off a little, uh, a little disheartening, maybe a little negative, but I, I think that's a bunch of bullshit. She, she grasps onto a lie, and she, you know, she's, she can't backpedal from that. It's such a small, petty thing. That's what I don't get about it. It's, it's uh, so hard to believe people with Tourette's in 2023. Yeah. Like, unless you have like a piece of paper signed by a doctor, it's like. Okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. Well, that's so minor. She's her, she's like, my Tourette's is this. And then that's it. Or like, she does a thing with her wrist. She flicks her wrist. And it's like, isn't it a lot more debilitating than that to say you have Not Tourette's? Necessarily. Really? Not necessarily. Yeah, no, there's... I don't know. I guess I, I don't know anything about it. So. But sometimes I, when I start to raise an eyebrow is when everything, every single one of their tics is like suspiciously cute. That and I guess that's like, what I'm getting at. It's like, this yeah. seems a little too sweet. Yeah, you know, a little too, a uh, little too cool on the top. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, just like weird fucking dumb clicky noises, and it's like, uh, I don't know. I've uh, dated somebody who had Tourette's for like a long time, like I don't know, like six months into the relationship. That's a long time. Somewhere, some well, yeah, for, no, we did for a couple of years, but for six months into the relationship, the Tourette's just like went away. That's exactly what I'm talking about. See, she got she got too comfortable. I bet she gets real comfortable and it, it stops. It's she, probably, yeah. She remembered mid-interview. Do you think that the guy from the 1975 is like sitting in his, in his two million dollar house listening to Billie Eilish pop and click? Maybe. No. Maybe, maybe that's his. No. That's his ASMR. I, I bet. I bet if if she does have Tourette's, she's holding that shit in like a fucking like an airplane shit. Yeah. I believe that. Okay. Okay. That's enough shitting on Billy. I guess she's just a little girl. Uh, t- we got Tom Holland. Tom Holland has a drinking problem, apparently. Did you know this? No, I didn't. Spider-Man has a fucking drinking problem, dude. That's that's canon for some of them. It's Yeah, it's definitely canon. Yeah, Peter Parker. Here we go. Let's see what he's got to say. Uh, All I could think about was having a drink. And it just really All I could think about was having a drink! And I can prove to myself I don't have a problem. Two months go by, and I was still really struggling. It felt like I couldn't be social. I started to really worry that maybe I had an alcohol problem. I said to myself, if I can do six months without alcohol, then I can prove to myself that I don't have a problem. And by the time I had got to June 1st... <laughs> they show I a clip of him as a bartender. That wasn't the I perfect spot better, to use that. I could handle problems better. Sort of said to myself, like, why am I so obsessed by the idea of having this drink? It's Because you're going to lose Zendaya, okay? She's, ar- she's already doing roles where she's having threesomes. I saw Euphoria, dude. I'd, I'd be fucking having a shot every morning, too. I don't blame you, okay? You don't have to apologize for it. You also don't have to tell everybody about it just because you're a celebrity, man. Yeah, I feel like celebrities feel like they have to tell everyone about their, like, addictions. And it's like, frankly, yeah. I could uh, I could give a rat's ass. Yeah, it's not like everything, like, dark in your life or that you struggle with has has to be considered a fucking skeleton, dude. You know, yeah. And if you want to, you know, if you want to raise awareness to these kind of things, you're more than welcome to do it. But you don't have to. Uh, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's just a little weird to me. Is that weird? Am I wrong about that? No, Am it's I, definitely okay. it's it's strange to air out. Uh, I mean, I guess I, I mean, don't know what it's like, but people people have this. As I'm thing, drinking a beer, there's an idea in society that talking about your personal str- struggles as a high level person makes it easier for other people to come out and deal and get help for their struggles. And yeah. maybe there's something to that. I think so. I, 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 now I see what you're saying. You know what? I, maybe I've changed my mind. Maybe this is a good thing. You know what? What other skeletons you have? You know, I think if you're going to release one skeleton, I think you're going to tell everything. Yeah. You so got to be totally be transparent. Party. And if you're going to come into my home and, and my kids are going to watch all of your movies and grow a fucking emotional connection or relationship with you, I think I want to know everything about you. If you're going to be in my fucking home... <laughs> If I'm going to bring Marvel movies into my home, I need to know what you're fucking about, dude. 
Yeah, no, that's that's why this is a Chris Pratt house. Good Christian values. <laughs> it, that's our represents. The Tomorrow War. Okay, that's <laughs> that's why it was acceptable in here. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. That might be. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We've we've got some other stuff to move on to. I think with celebrities, uh, we might have a long form video actually. Yeah, I'm peeling back the uh, peeling back the curtain here a little bit for everybody. Actually, no, I think that's it. I think let's move on to some. Uh, some in real life and online content. How does that sound, everybody? Let's move on to let's move on to some of that stuff. It's gonna get a little dark here before we take another shit. <laughs> so <laughs> At this point, yeah. Okay, I think I need to stop here and take a little objection before we move on to more videos. We have a soundboard, okay? And we've been going absolutely nuts with this. Why don't we play around with this for a second? Let's have some fun here, okay? Let's have some fun. Slowly faded into darkness, <laughs> and I let the archangels take him. I'm on them Georgetown Geronimo. You know it. I don't give a fuck if I go blind. We smoking filtered crack, you stupid piece of shit. Dude, I'll... I love Dracula I, Flow. This is my this, uh, Dracula Flow three. Okay, well, all three of them are great, dude. That has become like my new thing. That's my favorite video. I don't know what it is about that guy. I don't know the story behind that. I don't know what's going on, but that is the funniest fucking thing in the world. I'm on them Nashville nibblers. For we smoking sequoia Sorry. banshee <laughs> boogers. For me, it's the uh, fuck the joie de vivre. Yeah. Can you do? Can you do the newscaster? Intro yeah, I can do that. I'm sick in oh, the oh, head. Oh, oh no, it's that audio clip <laughs> broken. For right now. I know. We, we, oh, 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 we had a continuation there. I'm sick in the head. <laughs> I'm on them Nashville. I'll let the nibblers. producer play around with the we sound effects a little bit. Symbiote. We share things here, okay? I don't just have to be the mainstay of all the fucking attention, oh, okay? My bad. I overreach. No, you're good. No, I, I allowed you. I allowed you. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, everybody gets one, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be calling some people. Yeah, people. See, people are calling me already. They're pissed off that you're overstepping the phones, your bounds, the phones are okay? Up. Phones are lighting up. Oh, speaking of that, we have voicemails, which we'll get to later on today. Thank you to all of you who uh, participated in that, by the way. I appreciate you. All right, and now we can move on to the in real life videos. Okay, we got some. We dude, now this is we're gonna have a bunch of fucking shit with this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's start it off good. Uh, the gun safety instructor. This is fucking ridiculous, dude. I okay. Now I gotta preface preface this before we play this. You might want to pause that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this guy. What is what's his uh, account name? Can you read that? I can't read that. I'm blind. I'm, I'm going. Uh, I'm going instructor blind. Instructor Mike. Instructor Mike. This guy, I believe he's in Illinois. Okay, now I do like some of his content and his videos. He's a smart guy, which is very weird for this fucking video. He teaches gun safety. Um, he stands up for children, uh, domestic violence. I mean, he's a, he's an all around good guy. But I saw this video and I was like, oh, maybe I'm wrong about my. Your heroes are not infallible, okay? Play. Okay, it looks like we're at a gas station here. Instructor Mike. Oh, oh, he's walking up on a gentleman. He's he's grabbed his gun. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know how Black Hawk works. Okay, okay, all right, yeah, 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 pause this. I don't care if you're a gun safety instructor or you're my cousin. If I'm open carrying a weapon, a firearm, do not come up and try to grab it from its holster, okay? <laughs> I don't care if it's a Black Hawk holster. I don't care if it's one of the ones that flip into your waistband. Dude, don't be grabbing for anybody's gun. As a safety instructor, like, is that is that how you're promoting yourself? Like, you uh. walk up on somebody with a gun and you're just... You're just grabbing it out and seeing if you can test it. Yeah, don't do that to a police officer. Like, oh, I was just trying to see you guys need more. Uh, you need more training. That's <laughs> all. Uh, yeah, Blackhawk. He's like, man, I know how it works. And dude, he's giggling after he grabs his what? How'd this happen? How'd this happen? Okay, Dad. What's special about a Blackhawk holster? Uh, see, now, now I don't know. Well, because I'm a, I'm an Eclipse holster man. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about somebody grabbing it out, okay? It all depends on, on what you're getting. Apparently, it's a... Uh, the lower grade one, and he's trying to say, uh, you got to specifically know how to use this one. But obviously, this guy just walked up and grabbed it right out of him. Yeah, um, yeah don't, Most people don't, don't do be knowing about these Black Hawk holsters. Yeah, they don't, they don't be knowing. Well, he knew. Yeah, it's probably about as hard to open as luggage. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what a way to promote yourself, though. Uh, <laughs> put your life in danger? No. 
That's see, this is the only thing, the only problem I had with Instructor Mike. Everything else across the board is great. He he does those kind of things. Uh, he seems to do it a lot at gas stations. He's got another video where he's just pumping gas and he's looking back and forth. And he's like, you always got to be situationally aware, situationally aware. And that's how you get got. It's like, dude, you're you're getting got other people. You're godding other people. Okay, no, 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 no. Just just try to be safe. Okay, that's dude. That's number one with gun safety. Uh, and look, I'm a I'm an NRA spokesperson all of a sudden. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, Eclipse is not a sponsor, by the way. <laughs> Roll the clip. Yeah, yeah. Let's just let's finish it out. Is that a cop? They just oh, cops oh, guns? oh, yeah, yeah. But dude, I didn't even notice that. I was right, dude. I was like, yeah, don't go do this to a cop. He did. Just because you hate it doesn't mean test the man. All right, dude, dude, it was a cop. That's crazy. Yeah, that's oh my god, I didn't even notice that the first time. Pulled yeah. an off-duty cop's gun out of its holster, and he's he's giggling. What kind of like, dude? He's got <laughs> you got me slipping, man. Dude, like, he's got what? some temperament to deal with that. You know, he, he thought it was hilarious. Yeah, you got me, man. Most people don't know it. I'm gonna give you a Safari Land. I don't know what I, I'm not familiar with Safari Land, but dude, I like that name. It's a good good name drop. Good. That's it. Uh, honestly, what if that's just really good sponsored content? It might be, but yeah, you know, I didn't see a badge number. He's, he's I didn't promoted. See a... <laughs> <laughs> it's just another instructor. They give themselves badges. Oh, dude, it's like uh, dojos. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's like a dojo. Yeah. <laughs> would you Would you be interested in ever doing any like dojo wars content, Count Dante stuff? Oh, McDojo, McDojo life kind of shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of that. Yeah, we could do that. Well, we might here on Death Camp. We're gonna we're gonna delve into martial arts at some point. Okay, it's it's it, within the realm of possibility here. So I, I know you had a story you, you wanted to do about a um, friend of ours. Do you, where do you want to start? With so, that? so let's, ho- let's hold off for one second with that. We have, okay. we have one more in real life that I do want to cover. Cause I think this one, this one's really funny. It's the, the gummy one. Oh yeah. This is, this is another thing that you, uh, you don't do in public. What's that? What'd you save that as? Uh, it should be, it you just type gummy, I believe. Or peeling back the curtain again for everybody. Yeah, American Death Camp, one of the only shows that is completely transparent, does not hide the content prep. If a show is hiding content prep and a little bit of the script, there's some nefarious things going on. So, something to think about. Most people don't. Uh, most people don't think about those layers that go into production with TV shows. It's like, <laughs> yeah. why, why do you have to hide some of those things? Okay. Yeah, and that's that's another thing, by the way. We're, we're always going to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get. We're, it looks like we're in Walmart here. The one show on the network that's not gaslighting people. 24/7. Yeah, yeah the, the one with no smoke. Yeah, no smoke screens right up front. You know what I mean? We're not. We're not going to fraud you. Okay. We're the only ones that are honest about what we are and what we want to do. Okay. Yes. You get the fog. Fi- I'm getting the. I'm getting. <laughs> I'm getting the fog machine in here to simulate smoke screens, literal ones. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it looks like we're in. Uh, we're in Walmart here. It says, "Giving strangers laced gummies." Oh, this should be interesting. Strangers laced gummies. Let's see he's handing the gummy to a, a gentleman he's later. running by. Hey, what you put in that gummy? Is that a weed gummy? <laughs> yeah, is that cool? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> is that good, bro? <laughs> yeah, dude, enjoy it, bro. No! Sheriff's, de- <laughs> Sheriff's Department, get on the ground! <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot wrong with that video. <laughs> well, you do not... Okay, just like you don't take a gun out of somebody's open carrying holster, dude, you don't give somebody just a stranger lace gummies. You don't know if that guy's an off duty cop. <laughs> we see a badge on him. Yeah, man, that was cool. <laughs> I'm cool with that. That's a, it's a mu- <laughs> it, it, dude. It's a mushroom gummy. Do you have any more, man? Like yeah, badge said, like falls out. <laughs> that was the one, dude. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna give you. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like sheriff's department. Well, get I, on the ground. I have an issue with the edible kicking in in five minutes. What's that? That, Is that too quick for you? It is because even so weed normally takes when you eat it 45 to 90 minutes to kick in. That's how I feel. Usually edibles go for me, even if it's gummy, honestly. So there's there's at least a 20 minute minimum for me. I don't know if it's my metabolism or something, but there's, there's a stuff called nano THC now. Okay. They emulsify it, make it super small particles. So it kicks in, in like 15 minutes. Kind of, you start to feel it quick. Super speeds the process. A lot, a yeah. little bit. Oh, th- that stuff would be good for for pre gaming. If you're into the pre gaming, for concerts, live events, 
and you're you're an edibles guy, or if you're going to you're going to Lost Lands, that happened this week, um, EDM festival. If you, if you want it to happen quick, get get what's that called? Nano. Yeah, Nano THC. Nano THC. We're a big uh, proponent of Nano THC. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone take it. <laughs> we, you know, we've been talking about cops here. I think I think I would have been a good cop. Yeah. I, I know people are going to be blue about that. Like, oh God! But I think I had I had it in me. Yeah, dude. No, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna unveil a little bit of my life. You know, people don't know this. I was uh I was I was destined to be a, a tier two operator with the United States military, but I you know, God forced my hand here to do this show. What is uh, a tier two operator? Uh, special forces. Oh, cool. The tier one is like SEAL Team Six, basically. You know what I mean? I, I, and yeah, that's that's you know I got to thank uh, the United States military and the Department of Defense for uh, turning me down in an eloquent way. You know, uh, I took the entry level test and my, I think it was uh, I think it was my level scores that intimidated them. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah it was it, just like he's got too much tea. Yeah, well, and I, I, you know they're. I was like, what do you only hire fucking idiots? My <laughs> IQ was too much. And they're like, anybody with your IQ intelligence is going to question orders. I thought, well, that's a kind of a respectful way of letting me down easy. Yeah. You, well, know? you know, they used to put people like that in like tech positions ah. or kind of like fast track them to like administration. And it's weird yeah. that now there's, I don't know why they're not doing that anymore. Like my brother, uh, in t- he, he <laughs> failed out of. Like the day before he was gonna go to basic, he fell out of a drug test or some shit like oh, that. Oh, that that'll do it. They gave that'll him, nix it. He he wanted he did it on purpose because he uh yeah. he fucking took some aptitude test and they were like, yeah, you know, you could really do anything, man. Like there's, you kind of take your pick. Well, yeah, the thing they were pushing for me was a uh, military interrogator, which I thought was interesting. But a lot, of, <laughs> I watched a video on it and it was like, this is basically ninety eight percent paperwork. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I, and I wasn't doing no desk jobs or tech infantry. That's, that's all I wanted to do. And that was it, dude. I'm gonna, if I'm going to do it, I'm just going to go all the way and do the action. But instead of doing that, instead of being on a clandestine operation in South America to take out a cartel, I'm doing an internet talk show, which I am more than glad to do, dude. I'm, I, just, I thank God every day that I didn't have to go and kill a bunch of innocent farmers. Yeah, you're the first podcaster <laughs> to be like, I tried to get involved in being a spook, and they wouldn't yeah, have dude. me. Come on, man. You, <laughs> I was going to go to the, the traditional, you know, the, the new Navy SEAL podcast grifter guys. You know, they uh, <laughs> they did the special forces, and then they did the CIA contracts, you know, whether it was Blackwater or, you know, the tri- going going to the farm, do, going the whole nine with that, you know, and then, then becoming podcasters. That's kind of interesting. I don't know, man. Maybe you're sheep dipped. Maybe. Maybe your real name is like Jose Gutierrez, and they might. Hey, I'm. You never know. I'll never. This know. might be. This might be a complete psyop. I uh, see. We we talked about the smoke screens. <laughs> that can't happen. That can't happen. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everybody. We've got we've got some, uh, on that. smoke screens to discuss. Oh yes, we? we do. We do. Yes. Um. Let's. Yeah. Let's. Within that too. Let's. Uh. We'll do. Come on, audience. Let's. Uh. Let's do a little bit of world building here. A little character building. As I should say, if unless you're not familiar with the Kill Podcasters universe, which some of our audience might not be, uh, we have a bunch of shows on the network, and one of them, one of my good friends, Izzy and Griffin. Everybody, Izzy and Griffin is we call him the Couch Philosopher. He's the Duh and Duh Heads. He's a rising star, uh, rising dude. Star. He's a Skanks Fest right now. He yes, yes. Shout out, shout out, Louis. Uh, and that, I'm actually jealous, dude. He's he's. He, we've been talking about rubbing shoulders with greatness, dude. The great the great Mole Dog is there, Mister mm-hmm. Mister Sam Hyde. Man, broad and narrow shoulders, all in attendance. Dude, yeah. And, and speaking of Izzy, too, dude, uh, rising star. I, I'm going to make my first prediction here on the show. Okay, one day he may be as big as Kanye West, if not greater. Yeah. I feel like he's going. Yeah, dude, look at one. Look at his, his list of friends, which I am more than honored to be a part of. By the way, Post Malone, uh, Mac DeMarco. Uh, right. Yeah. Um. Who's Who's that one Malaysian uh, prime minister? He's tight with. Oh, I, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, see, the, see, there's there's yeah. a, a broad list of very uh, giant icons that he's friends with, and dude, I mean, we get to be on the list. We get to be on the list. How amazing is that? I know. I I hope that uh, some of the sweat drops off of his balls, and we can <laughs> taste the sweet hydration <laughs> of fame. <laughs> we're getting there, okay? We're we're milking it all that it's worth, okay? Um, so recently, um, because we besides just giving him a plug, he did something that we really liked. He did a sketch, a fully produced sketch. Uh, with Note Productions, I believe, right? Uh, yes, Note Productions. Shout out to Note Productions. This looks really good, by the way. So we want to do, uh, we want to present this with you. This might be our full, our first uh, full length video too. Yeah, you know, roll it. Yeah, let's let's just give it a go. Okay, man. So I really wanted to sit you down and have a conversation, um, really about your 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 comedy show, your open mic the other night. How, yeah, you guys. Well, you're there. Yeah, and I. 
first of all, props to you for taking that step, being brave enough to just get out there and, and go was on it, there. Was it good or was it not? Well, when I was 22 years old, I got involved with the Russian Mafia. Here's how it happened. A hundred percent. The material you did on stage, uh, did you write that? Yeah. That, that's original? Yeah, the story that I told? Yeah. And then I met the other two banditis, Igor and Igor, a hundred percent. I thought the Russian class was a Spanish class for two weeks, and I didn't even notice. A hundred percent. Strasvucha, bitches! You're doing The Machine by Burt Kreischer. Who? You I watch Joe heard. Rogan, you know who Burt Kreischer is. Brent? Crystal? I don't know. I don't know who Burt. Burt, Burt, Burt? That's a weird... Burt Kreischer. Burt Kreischer? How do you know that is? Burt Kreischer, what are you saying? <laughs> Burt Kreischer, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm Burt Kreischer. <laughs> okay, so you did it. You went up there, you did his bit, The Machine. I'm doing my own original story that is my story. A I cyborg. Think that was word for word The Machine. It was impressive how much of it you knew and memorized. <laughs> yeah, because it's my story. Obviously, I'm gonna know it's my story. He's the cyborg. I'm the cyborg. I'm the cyborg. A hundred percent. That's how I got this watch robbing the train in Russia. I'm the cyborg! I'm the cyborg. I went to Russia and I was hanging out with the Russian mob and they started calling me the cyborg. That's- You haven't been out of the state. Your statement is incorrect. I'm, I'm trying to wrong. find out how I can get through to you through this visage of Burt Kreischer, America's funny man. If you're trying to say that I did a bad job, then just say that I did a bad job. It wasn't bad. that it was bad, it was that it was word for word, The Machine by Burt Kreischer. Do you know how hard it is to get up there and do stand-up comedy? Do you know how difficult that is? It takes comedians 10 to 30 years to become good at, at stand-up comedy. So if you're, if you're saying that I stole it, then I must, be, I must have been pretty good. Look at you, you're dressed exactly like him. Look at your dangly gold necklace. Your wa I've never seen you wear a watch. <laughs> I'm a watch guy. In your life. I just got into watches. I've been a watch. I just got to became a watch guy. I saw I just you. started getting into watch guy. I'm a watch guy now. You took your shirt off. Of course I know who Burt Kreischer is, you fucking moron. <gasps> He's the machine. The machine is the perfect melding of man and machine into an algorithmic, orgasmic coalescence that get views higher and higher. The virality is beautiful. TikTok. The views increase to the perfect number, six million. And that is what the machine is. Don't you get it yet, you fucking imbecile? Dude, you're like, you're like half talking to me. Cyborg, everybody. Cyborg. Okay. Dude, that was, oh my god. It gets, it gets better every time. Yeah. Uh, dude, I also uh, appreciate the handsome gentleman from Note Productions that's in that video. If you're out there, shout out. Uh, that's, dude, that's, a, that's the first mention of uh, a celebrity. Like, like uh, one that's within our, uh, within our grasp. Burt Kreischer. That's yeah. a great Burt Kreischer parody, man. I can say. <laughs> I, uh, the cyborg. Dude, there's a... Uh, I like that sketch because it reminds me of this kid I went to summer camp with. Is he? Uh, did he take his shirt off and uh, scream all the time and tell a bunch of tall tales? He was he was big and fat and he lied a lot. And uh, <laughs> there we go. There's, there's two off the checklist. There's two off the checklist. And there's <laughs> he would say there's this guy named Burt Kreischer who has this amazing story, and then he would do the <laughs> machine story verbatim tell the story. Yes. <laughs> so he's he's basically actually he's an honest Burt because yes. Burt Burt does it. Burt Burt. Uh, Bert will steal like a Jay Moore story and, uh, and pass it off as his for like 15 years. <laughs> At least he's being honest with you. He's being up front. I, I appreciate this kid. Um, <laughs> is that the, the Tracy Morgan? Tracy Morgan? Morgan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is all uh, alleged. So, you know, yeah. apparently they had a deal. So, I mean, you know, you're allowed to use comedians bits and everything. So it was one of those like, let me let me get that story. Yeah, let me yeah Tanner, that. you got any you got any stories in wheelhouse I can steal? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I just have, come to you and ask. Dude, that's something. what's funny is like I've. I've given bits to people before. It's really hard to not have someone run material by you and yeah. not get like a second joke out of it or a third <laughs> joke out of it. Yeah. Um, 
Um, oh, you know what? This so this goes hand in hand with uh, this is a real story. Like this is a developing story that has to deal with this. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, I mean, supposed, I guess not supposedly. Um, I'm, I think, I'm just phrasing this in a question because I got to be a little safe here. I think this can't stand up comedian. People are alleging. People are alleging that this stand up comedian is censoring my friend, is censoring Izzy. I, I don't know if it was this because this has been in the build up to this amazing production, this amazing sketch. Um, and I believe we have a little bit of, little bit of a, I don't know if it's concrete evidence, but we've got some images here. So I'm aware of the trolls. My team is handling it. Some internet sleuths took that, that, uh, yeah. you know, this was the from, day this before is from the X. cyborg video This is from X, out. right? Yes, yeah, from yeah. X. Yeah, this is the day, the day before this uh, acclaimed video is released. And, uh, and then, boom, what do you know? Oh, and then on from his accounts... Uh, his, this is his second Twitter account. Um, yeah, at Izzy and Griffin 2. At Izzy and Griffin 2, everybody, if the, you want to go and uh, check some of this out for yourself. The day uh, of the dropping of the cyborg, he is banned from Reddit after making... Oh, he's blocked from our Burt Kreischer, the Burt Kreischer subreddit. <laughs> Specifically that. Oh, and yeah, I, After I making believe, no posts. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Not just being an observer, just being a lurker. So that tells you something. Somebody must have uh, gotten his IP or something because it's not just that one. It's also specifically the fighter and the kid. Oh really? Yes, so which is talking. like yes, which is like in the wheelhouse. I don't know if his his uh, his PR strike team is on that. Well, so there's I mean speaking of the fighter and the kid, there's some lore building going on on uh, Reddit right now. Oh yeah, and this is within a uh, a comment thread uh, for the cyber cyborg too. Cybert. The cyber. The cyber. <laughs> the psyop. On the psyop cybert. Um, do you want, would you like me to read this? Yeah, I can't uh, see it for shit. I'm, bl I'm, I'm blind, by the way. That's why I wear these glasses. It calms the light that's under my, on my, gleaming down in my eyes. This guy goes by Izzy N. Griffin. He's been doing the Cyborg Act all over the country since 2021. <laughs> I saw him in Tampa last year at a festival. He was like 80 pounds heavier and so drunk he could barely speak, let alone do a set. I believe that's true. I believe that's true. <laughs> he, he came on stage already topless, wearing a pair of American flag boxer briefs, something... <laughs> Uh, this is something he would, he totally would do, do. dude. Would all of this that. is like for real. Yeah, <laughs> he used to be in a rock band and get completely naked. This isn't just um, an ARG, everybody. <laughs> American flag boxer briefs that were uh, wet with something, then barked and hissed into the mic for two minutes straight. This is a lot like a stand-up set. I think he's set, done actually. something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the only part I disagree with. Yes, I don't believe that it's at funny all. Funny to see work, man. <laughs> it's hard not to be around him without laughing, dude. Even he just talks, I'm fucking. Oh, dude, he's a <laughs> cut up, dude. I'm laughing like Bert. <laughs> <laughs> he's turning me into Bert when I'm around him, dude. <laughs> uh, to turn things around, he became belligerent and picked a fight with a man in a Disney shirt that even, had, even had to be broken was, uh, up with by other audience members. Even if it was going well or not, they would end that way <laughs> with Izzy. It would the same way. <laughs> St staff apologized to the guy and security literally dragged quote the cyborg away and he screamed I don't care I literally don't care over and over between laughing like a mental patient I believe they've left out the part where he would threaten to uh, karate kick them yeah in the in the Adam's apple absolutely <laughs> and you know I, I'm betwixt uh, between two uh, two statures here two two giant uh, <laughs> monoliths of uh, culture because uh, I actually. I've I've uh, been in the presence of Bert. Do we have a uh, oh. we have that? Uh, I believe we have an image there. Yes. Yeah. Here here we go. Here's me with the machine IRL. God, dude, this is the worst photo I think I've ever taken. To, you know, I might be the only uh, the only man who can uh, stand next to Bert and uh, make him look fucking glorious, <laughs> make him look amazing. You look like one of the Zarnev brothers. I do. This is my <laughs> rickety cricket phase, dude. This is from quite a while ago. You know what? Maybe this happens when he takes personal photos with people. Maybe he glitches out the screen. You know what? Now I'm thinking, I I don't think he's like a, some PSYOPTA CIA funded thing. I think he's an SCP entity. Yeah. In Keter class, drunk ass. <laughs> <laughs> Keter class SCP, Burt Chrysler. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. So this is a, that's a developing story. It's our first real story. I can't believe we're so close to that. I'm so close. Like within, within arm's reach. So we'll, we'll there, there, I'm sure there'll be some developments. And we'll we'll circle back around to this. So if you want to go find out for yourself, if you find any evidence out there, this is a good time to plug this. Send any information you have. If you if you dig anything up, to American Death Camp at gmail dot com. That is, or, or I guess if you have a, a a tip, you can leave it on the hotline. 
um, got him. All right, there, there it is at the bottom of your screen, 773-492-2440. If you have any tips, leads, that would be perfect. Definitely. We were going to eat some of this stuff up, dude. That's great. I love that. That's, that was a great story, dude. That was awesome. We had, we had a, we, supposed alleged evidence. Legend evidence. Photos to go with alleged it. Alleged misdoings. Yeah, dude. We're all uh, one degree away from greatness. That's amazing. <laughs> and come on. Leave my friend alone, dude. In this fucking SCP Keter class. Ridiculous, dude. All right. Um, let's move on to something else. Something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more lighthearted, a little more f- exciting. I've been watching a lot of trash television. You into trash television, Tanner? Oh, big fan. You know, uh, I'm a classic uh, Jerry Springer guy. I've been watching a lot of, a lot of Pluto TV. Nosy. Nosy, yeah, no, we're oh, gonna dude. do some nosy shit. Nosy is uh, nosy is definitely my way to go. Is this Jason's um, cabaret? So yes, yes. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna spotlight this show I've been watching, and I've actually and not nosy. I've been watching this on the Zeus Network. You guys familiar <laughs> with the Zeus Network? No, I believe, <laughs> dude. Their uh, their logo is like a lightning bolt. It's kind of sick. It's definitely my my speed. Uh, so Zeus, I believe, is a, a subsidiary of BET. So I guess you trust me. You'll see once you see start seeing some of this, you'll be like, oh, that this makes sense. Uh, Jocelyn Hernandez, everybody, the Puerto Rican princess. OK, she was. A... Oh, no, no. Here, pause this. Pause this. No, we got to do this is uh, we're, ju- we're jumping ahead a little bit. We're we're, we're excited. OK, uh, we got. Yeah, we got a trailer in there. It's in the <laughs> everybody can follow along here with us at home uh, long down in the like longer form videos. Yeah, videos. It, I think it's the first one, maybe. Yeah, right there. Okay, this is uh, Jocelyn's Cabaret, New York. This show's been going for a few seasons, but this is going on now. I've been watching this religiously. There she is. Doing the residency in Vegas was cool, but I feel like going to New York is going to really bring out the artists and the Puerto Rican places. Hell no. I've not been disappointed once with this show, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you said it's a lot of thrown ass. Oh my god, dude. It's it's all ass. This show is one hundred percent ass. <laughs> ass and fist fights, everybody. Talk about pandering. So. Oh <laughs> dude, pause it for a second. Pause it for a second. <laughs> Okay, maybe this is a little mean. Um, she does a lot of the. I've been on her Instagram, obviously. When you follow the show, you got you got to follow their profiles and everything. See what's going on. She does a lot of filters. Okay, she she kind of does. I mean, that's understandable. You can do fil- You can do whatever you want. She a little beat there, bro. If you want to go back a couple frames, like on the keyboard, you're you're more than welcome to. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Uh, so usually she looks like a Kardashian in her Instagram, but I mean, to me, the first thing I thought, oh, Waka Flocka. <laughs> Am I wrong? I mean, I, yeah. I feel like that's spot on, and not that that's an insult, dude. It, why wouldn't you want to be compared to uh, one of the greatest uh, musicians of our time? Yeah, no, you know? she looks like she got arrested in Russia for having vape pens in her bag. <laughs> and they traded her for a, a a weapons dealer to get her out of there. <laughs> oh my god! You know, that's another thing. By the way, I got to speak one second on Brittany Griner. You know what? If she had taken the L, she would have been known as a bigger hero. You know how many lives she would have saved? How, oh my god! If she would have stayed and just uh, did her sentence and then let her go, and the, or if she would have let the the marine come here instead, how? Oh my god! Wait, I feel like she would have been a bigger a bigger hero. How long was her sentence? Well, I, I probably indefinite, knowing that oh, dude. You know what yeah, I mean? Uh, but but they traded. Uh, they chose to trade her for the weapons dealer than the marine. Um, I think they both. I, I mean, you know, I mean, whoever you would have chosen. I think if they both had just stayed there, nineteen year old girl always wins though. True, true, but but think about it like this: If she were to do that, and then, well, however long the sentence is, she gets out and she comes back here. Think about how big her platform is going to be. Then, she can, then she can she can do anything she wants. Anybody's going to follow her and listen to her and be like, "Oh, dude, she saved so many lives, so many countless future possibilities for people." You know what I'm saying? Am I wrong about that? Is I that mean, is that well? Mean? How many how many lives? W- how would she have saved more lives by sending one marine home? Well, no, no. I mean, like if they both had just stayed, if they both had just like what would that have done though? Uh, oh, because we, we would have Russians kept the arms dealer. We would have kept the arms dealer. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. and and you know he and he was cracking a smile. I don't mm-hmm. know if you saw the photos of him. He was cracking a smile getting on the airplane, and I was like, oh, he's got some dastardly shit planned. I mean. Yeah, maybe he's just happy to get off. Like it's you know yeah. what's weird. Well, I'm like, sure where he were, was. <laughs> where were you in a position to get arrested by American forces? Like if you're 
were you like visiting Yellowstone? Yeah, you might. <laughs> like, well, you must not be, you know, very good at your job. <laughs> if, you, if you're that high level, you know, arms dealer, he, it was probably, he probably got set up. He got set up like Sean Penn did El Chavo. Oh, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Maybe Sean Penn set his ass up. <laughs> We're meeting with uh, this uh, Russian arms dealer. Sean gotta, Penn's a wag the dog kind of both play both sides of the war kind of guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to we're going to you know what? Let's pin the whole situation on Sean Penn. <laughs> OK, it was all his fault. No, but Brittany Griner is home. We're glad we love her. We're glad. I'm glad that she's uh, back into her sport doing her thing. It, I, I, nobody wants to be incarcerated. No, that's what it comes down to. You know, it is all fun and jokes and everything. But no. For freedom is freedom is good. No matter uh, how many uh, mastermind criminals you have to trade in the process to <laughs> to, to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, you know he's just over there doing Russian stuff right now. Yeah, that's all he's doing. Oh, 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 now that there's a lot going on over there, he's probably a big deal. Big business. He, he's a big wheel. Big he had the connections. Now. Oh yeah, he's literally Daddy Warbucks. Imagine imagine being uh, used in a prisoner swap, international prisoner swap, because uh, you have a guy's phone number. Dude, I wonder if they passed each other. Like uh, like they do like they do in a a, a drug oh, a drug deal not. movie or something and they see each other and they both like nod and smile at each other as they're passing. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> okay, well let's get the oh um, so the thing with Jocelyn's cabaret this is basically America's next top model with exotic dancers. That's that's the whole point of it. She hasn't gotten into it yet, but. It's RuPaul's Drag Race with vaginas. Yes, yes. Who's against that? Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a brave new world. Beat her ass. <laughs> I bet she would. A lot of hot tub scenes. Is it censored on Zeus? No. You sh but don't bury the lead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're crazy. That's a clip from the next scene. Okay, you can pause. That it. looks like a sketch. That doesn't even look it like does, real television. It, it does look like a sketch, doesn't it? <laughs> Come like a TikTok on, bro. That teenagers make. It doesn't look real, bro. <laughs> this wonderful woman is Miss Natural. Everybody, they all have little nicknames. Miss Natural, Yummy. There was one woman that they they kicked off the show. Her name was just Orgasm. Orgasm, yeah, <laughs> orgasm would go home. They get soon. real, real creative with it. Yeah, <laughs> fucking, uh, I, I love making up drag queen names because yeah. they're always terrible. What if you had a, a drag name? What would it be? You got a Lisa Boat. Lisa Boat. No, dude, because because I, I would be leasing a boat. But I, no, I don't. I don't have a drag queen name for myself. <laughs> no, I have one that could I be. Should, uh, no, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Um, there's a there's a character I thought of that I don't think I would ever perform because <laughs> it sounds really. Annoying to do makeup for four hours. Oh, but for it's sure. It's called brunch slut. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's just brunch like, slut. It's like a big brassy like. Uh, that sounds like a, a new age bar. Yeah, a new age bar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and one of those new brunch restaurants. Is it an early bird? I'm at brunch slut. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I, I brunch slut is now copyrighted. Okay, that yeah. is our that is our intellectual property. Now. I'm actually happy you made me put it down somewhere because <laughs> I. Didn't, I don't want anyone to steal this million dollar idea. Yeah, it's recorded forever. You know, I think my name would be uh, Stone Fucks to Twat. <laughs> Stone Fucks to Twat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, to answer your question, dude. No, that's one thing we can't do on the show. Not yet. Uh, nudity. Yeah. Yes, there's there's a lot in this. I hey, I I'm a heterosexual maniac, okay? Yeah, I get it. All right, but there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the female body. Okay, and th this is what they do for a living. Now that that woman who's on the uh, she's on the. Uh, the bus uh, table, they drink a lot. They do a lot of drink. They get into a house and it's just filled with liquor. So they're just yeah. getting fucked up, going to fucking dance recital and everything. Um, it seems so miserable. Like my body would just hate it there, man. Like I'd just be sick every I, day. I gotta give it up to them for their endurance and stamina through some of this stuff, dude. It's no, honestly, like I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be doing this stuff hung over. They do a lot of the stuff hung over. I'm sure, <laughs> faded as fuck, dude. Oh god damn! I couldn't. I couldn't dance. So props off to the, the girls in uh, Jocelyn's cabaret. Do you want to play the rest of this? Um. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're kind of close on time. Okay. Uh, well, do you I do want this Instagram let, clip. Yeah. Let's show the clip, and I believe it's from this scene actually. So I want to give you a little. You know, one of the one of the greater fights of uh, season four of Jocelyn's cabaret. Between uh, Miss Natural and Yummy. Yummy's in the front seat. Because I said 
succeed and she sucked dick. Oh, fucking get him, girl. She pulls a she pulled a knife on her. Everybody, when they were getting into a fight in the Sprinter van. Damn! Look at that corset. Right. Here we go. Boom. This is a quick little, uh, quick little tease, little little fight tease there. Little everybody, there's gonna be there's gonna be some cat Puerto fights Rican here on girlfriend Death Simulator. Camp. Puerto Rican girlfriend simulator. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Definitely, dude. Those girls. Those girls are fine. I think the fact that they're getting into fights, that might that might get me going. Yeah, it gets me going a little bit. You're dude, a cat you know? fight guy. Oh yeah, a big cat fight guy, dude. Yeah, well, I did, well I, I, you know, I didn't discover that till I started. I gave the show a chance. You know, I, I went down a rabbit hole. Besides all the all the wonderful titties, you know. Yeah, man. <laughs> that helps the fights. <laughs> when there's a lot of ass jiggling, dude, it helps you get through the fights. I'll tell you what. <laughs> That's uh, you know, it's crescendo. Like boxing. Yeah, it's like it's like boxing. It's like prime time boxing. HBO boxing. No, I don't need HBO boxing. I got Jocelyn's cat. I got the Zeus network. All right. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, what did you want to hit next? Let's see. What is next? Um, I believe I believe we had another clip of this, but I think everybody got the point uh, of Jocelyn's cat. Right? That's well. That's that's the trash. Shit. Everybody see. We're we're doing it old school here. Okay. All right. Not only do we have documents, we've got uh, we've got notebooks with everything. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No, we we covered all the main things. Okay, so. Away from trash television, that was great. Go go check out uh, go check out the Zeus Network. Check out Justin's Cabaret. She deserves a little bit of attention. Um, I think we can move on to one of the audience participation parts of the show. Oh um, yeah, the voicemail, which I I plugged right before uh, we did that segment. Uh, the voicemail we had we had we've got a couple of calls in here, I believe. Uh, thank you to those who uh, called in. They wanted to say something. They wanted to ask a question, maybe a topic. I I haven't I haven't heard these yet. Um, that's one part of the show. If you want to remain anonymous, don't, don't say your fucking name. Um, so we're going to blind, blind go into these. You ready for this? This is a little uh, off the cuff kind of shit. All right, let's start uh, Let's start with the first voicemail. Hey, uh, I know it takes you a lot of time to gather up the clips <laughs> that uh, you it got does. the show. It does. But as a, uh, as a long-time listener, I really prefer if you uh, kind of gave your opinion uh, <laughs> you a fuck. little bit more. Seems like you kind of just play a lot of clips. <laughs> uh, what do you think we do and, here? Uh, yeah, fr- sounds like a friend of the show. And you, you don't really give too much of what you think. So I, I think that <laughs> as a listener, you know, you should really, you should really start yeah. uh, like playing less clips and really start mm-hmm. uh, actually like hosting a radio show. Yeah, um, radio, radio we've show. Had enough of the clips. We're on radio. Um, okay, uh, one. My only thing with that is uh, if you want a fucking opinion. Okay, I'm mean, oh, getting all angry and serious. If you want a fucking nuanced opinion, go watch Gutfeld. Okay, go back to, go back to Glenn Beck. Okay, that's all, that's all I got to say to that that asshole, <laughs> that that uh, perfect popped asshole. <laughs> Let's go to the next voicemail here. Well, I've never been much into anything like that. If I want to know more about something, I, uh, I read about it. I think that Grandpa? was pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's grandfather was let loose on the hotline and taking one too many uh. Went too many Xanax. Jesus Christ, dude. Maybe the next one is more decipherable. Holy shit, dude. Hey, guys. Got a question for you. Uh, yeah, shoot. Lauren Bobert. Oh. Did you hit that? Oh, you fuck, dude. take her to a musical first. <laughs> That's Ooh. good. That's a good question. Dude, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. She's fine. That that was... I don't care if she set that all up and that was like a, a publicity thing. God damn. She was wearing the right dress and she's giving that guy the, the over-the-pants handy during yeah. fucking... Dude, O-T-P-H-J. during... DPHJ? During... Yeah. During Beetlejuice? Damn, dude, that's yeah. fucking uh, that's righteous to me. Yeah, we're gonna, uh, yeah, oh yeah, she's she slid into my DMs a couple weeks ago. We're gonna go see Avenue Q, <laughs> Avenue Q. I don't even think that that's not that's, a musical. It's that's just a, a puppet show, right? No, no, it is a musical. It's a, <laughs> oh, it's, it is. Okay. It's a great musical. Shows how much I know. But it's really I've seen clips. It's really dirty and it's all about sex oh, and oh, violence. Oh, then that's that's absolutely perfect for her, dude. That'll get her right in the mood. Get you right in the mood, Lauren. Lauren Bobert, if you're out there, come on, dude. Get, get, call 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 the hotline 773-429-2440 or email american death camp at gmail.com we can go on our date okay <laughs> i got uh, i got season uh tickets to the theater here so we can go see every every production that's uh that's going on dude do you really have season tickets to the theater right no, now fuck no uh, sometimes <laughs> i do and so like i, I don't I, have them this year I'll... yeah i thought about it because you know once in a while spider-man live rolls through yeah turn <laughs> off might, the dark. <laughs> i might need to go see spider-man okay <laughs> <laughs> the Lion King. 
Um, Sh- Shrek actually came through once, and the bus and truck company I think played for like three weeks. Oh, there's a Shrek one. Oh, Damn, there's a Shrek the musical. Do Fuck they make yeah. one for everything, dude? It's it's really easy. It's like turning a book into a movie. There's a formula for it. Yeah, there's a formula for it. Of course, dude. No, so, that's great. Um, good voicemails, everybody. That was awesome, Lauren Bobert. No, we didn't want to play that footage. That footage has been played ad nauseum. I don't need to see her getting groped for the millionth time. All right, she looks good. If you if you want to see it, go look it up for yourself. All right, and that's the voicemails, everybody. Um, let's see. What is uh? I think that's uh that's about it for Death Camp today. Yeah, I that's, believe uh, so. That's an hour. That, that's an hour. Minutes. All right. Well, I got to. Uh, I got to give some thank yous. Um, first of all, thank you to the Kill Podcasters Network, and also thank you to the CEO, CFO, COO, Tanner, also my producer. Hey. It's not every day that you get to do uh, your own show on a network with uh, the CEO of the fucking company. Yeah, hey. finger guns. Um, Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, of course, dude. It's been it's been fucking fun, dude. I hope all of you had a fun time. You know, uh, participate next time for the next episode, dude. Yeah, catch um, a rising star. Yeah, catch a rising star. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be more like. Uh, What's that uh, talent show? Not thirty uh, seconds for, to fame, but uh, oh, Star Search. <laughs> star Search. This is your. This is gonna be your new Star you, Search, everybody. You really did want to have a lot of talent on this show, and and I think we have the capability. We can to make phone them in. So yeah, everybody. Might yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're doing the uh, like during the pandemic stuff. Jimmy Fallon's having bands perform in fucking Zoom. We can do that. Yeah, but we I mean, can, also think of all happen. the minor celebrities we could interview. Oh, I th- I think that that's a that's a possibility. That's what we're working toward. Mm-hmm. We wanted to lay the groundwork. It get some inroads going here. All right, everybody, get get you all used to this. Get used to the get used to the death camp <laughs> the barbed wire fence that is the content of this fucking show jesus i gotta i gotta shout out to uh izzy and griffin everybody i gotta thank you to him too um i think i got a special sh- dude i gotta thank sam hyde yeah bel- believe it or not i know that's a kind of a big reach but that's also why i'm wearing my fish tank hoodie everybody which is available at fish tank.tv if it's not live fish tank that fish tank dot live whoops whoops that's a big misnomer that a lot of people make on a, on the internet um if that show didn't happen and I didn't get balls deep into it, this may not have even existed. Yes, because of oh, this, yeah. I I, w- I stumbled into this fucking uh, this wonderful uh, opportunity. So I got I got to say thank you to Sam yeah. Hyde. Is that do we do we owe our friendship to Sam Hyde? We do, we do. Oh, that's so funny, um, dude. I didn't is know he, that. Is he is the main thing with that? I guess I'm kind of breaking down uh, yeah. the fourth wall here a little bit. Yeah, but um, you to I, Izzy and then I was yeah. We stumbled across each other, and I say he was probably uh, mass adding people, and he added me, and I thought he was the milkman yeah. <laughs> from Fish Tank, and I was like, dude, oh my god, you know, because in that one clip he's wearing that the milkman hat, um, and then I started listening to Duh Heads, and then you know. Everything works uh, its way from there. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah, and also, um, this is a reiteration of demos that I did for a show, similar similar to this one, but there was no video element. Okay, and I've heard from experts and professionals in the podcasting industry that unsuccessful podcasts only make it about ten episodes. Mine made it less than eight episodes, and I got signed to a network. Okay, that's what kind of show we're doing here. Okay, that's the kind of talent that we've got going on at the Kill Podcasters Network, dude. We're, we're, we're getting signed under 10 episodes. You know what I mean? Isn't that fucking incredible? And you're all here along for the ride, dude. And we're, we're glad to fucking have you. That's for goddamn sure. What do you, what do you think the first thing you're going to do that'll piss your fans off is? Um, well, one, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to use my audience as cannon fodder. And that's a promise. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try my best not to piss them off. But dude, what, what do you think? What do you think this is, dude? I'm, there's going to be some of this shit I'm not going to make any friends with. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's not what enough. I'm doing this for too, you know? So it is what it is. You, you can't please fucking everybody, but you can please yourself. Mo- most people are uh, na- some kind of nationalist. I'm a self nationalist. Okay. Yeah. I got to, I got to lift myself an individualist? up. I'm an indi- <laughs> yeah. That's a better way to put it. I put sure I probably shouldn't put it like that. Huh? It's a libertarian <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Not as dog whistly when you say it like that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it dog whistling if it's being a libertarian? Uh, yeah, you're yeah. just not. You're just bad at parties. You're not like evil. <laughs> yeah, I'm not evil. <laughs> I just try to make most people think I'm a neocon anyway, just to get them off my back. Yeah, keep them away. <laughs> I think. See, we've already lost ten viewers from you just saying that the N word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, you got a, you got any last words? I, I I feel like I need, I need to let you say something at the end. You know? No. Uh, I mean, you hey. said you were glad to be here, but is there anything? Hey, uh, everybody, thanks for watching the show. Yeah. Check out everything else on the Kill Podcasters Network at Kill Podcasters on Twitter. Uh, we got a lot of great shows. Uh, yes. We got a lot of great stuff coming from Emmett here. Or Stone Fox. Fuck. Do I need to censor Whoa, that? Who the editing? fuck is that? Do I need to censor <laughs> we, that? We might need a bleep there, buddy. 
Okay. Uh, my, I thought my name was Geraldo or whatever. Yeah. For uh, Geraldo. <laughs> <laughs> Gutierrez or whatever. Yeah, Jose Gutierrez. <laughs> a tier, a tier two operator. That's me in another uh, timeline, dude. Me and, me and Izzy in another timeline. We're, we're, we're pulling ops. Damn, we're pulling I, ops in Grenada. You let me talk one time and I, I, I dox you. You flub it up, dude. Yeah. This is the producer I'm working with. No, I'm just kidding, dude. You've done a fucking stellar job. Uh, if you're at home, put your fucking drinks down, stare at your screen, and give it a round of applause for fucking Tanner, everybody. He's he's wonderful. I love him to fucking death. Without him, too, this none of this would have been possible. So I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity and all of this, dude, definitely. I'm getting a little too emotional. That's not what fucking death camp is, dude. I'm holding a fucking switchblade, okay? <laughs> The show needs to be a little bit more fucking dangerous. All right. All right. You've heard enough from me. Uh, this show is actually uh, also dedicated to uh, my little my little handsome gentleman, Luca, who's no longer with us. So thank you, Luca. Shouts out to you and the, the, big, uh, the big dipper in the sky, the big party in the sky, okay? I love you, everybody. Um, uh, we'll have uh, Keith David close out the show in the fucking credits, all right? <laughs> love you, everybody. Stone Fox is done for today. Thank you for stopping by. Tune in again next time on American Death Camp. Remember to subscribe and follow the show and other shows on the Kill Podcasters Network.